Right, so, Keir Starmer's judgment is once more being caught into question, and quite justifiably, actually, given he wants to run the country. There's a blast from this past has come back to haunt him. Another example of his inaction as Director of Public Prosecutions, potentially calling into question his leadership and, by extension, the kind of Prime Minister he'd make if we're all unfortunate enough to see him reach number 10. And this one goes right to the heart of his reputation, too. Starmer makes a lot of his time at the Crown Prosecution Service. And I've spoken in other videos, I staff there didn't like him much and why they felt his reforms were largely pointless when he was director of public prosecutions. His contributions to sentencing guidelines that he's blamed the Tories for being soft on despite them following instructions he himself had laid down. Now a miscarriage of justice has been laid at his feet. People are asking questions about how involved he might have been personally in it, how that is reflecting on him in terms of his leadership, and he's going to have trouble weaseling out of this one if more attention is paid to it going forwards. The story concerns a chap called Andrew Malkinson. In 2003, a 33-year-old woman was raped and left for dead in Salford. The following day, Malkinson gets a visit from the police. The woman recalls leaving her attacker with a deep scratch. Malkinson had no scratch. Despite that, though, he was arrested a fortnight later, was picked out of a video lineup, yet there was no DNA evidence connecting him to the crime. Regardless of that, the following year, 2004, he was convicted of rape and given a life sentence. Now, coming on to 2007, there was a nationwide review of forensic evidence called Operation Cube. This was conducted an investigation into how forensic evidence had been used in historic rape and murder cases. And the Malkinson case was one such case that got reviewed. And it discovered DNA on the victim's vest top in a crime-specific area that neither matched Malkinson nor the victim's boyfriend at the time. The new DNA was run through the police database, but no match was found, though. In 2008, a report was written about the new DNA discovery by the FSS, the Forensic Science Service. Now, come 2009, Malkinson must have felt this new evidence and this report that the FSS had written would exonerate him. He'd already appealed his sentence once in 2006 and failed. But come 2009, he applied to the Criminal Cases Review Commission, the CCRC, to look at his case again. And they apparently said of the case that, just because it appears there is someone else's DNA on the complainant's vest, not the boyfriend's or the applicant's, cannot surely produce a successful referral in view of all the other strong ID evidence. So the mystery DNA was completely ignored then. The ID evidence, comprising of being picked out of a video lineup, carried more weight, apparently. And however you look at this situation, the DNA can never be wrong. DNA can never lie. DNA is DNA, and it's unique to every person. Uh, so ID evidence versus DNA and them coming out with ID evidence being the more accurate, more stringent. I cannot see you. Obviously, less reliable evidence supersedes DNA like that. But it did in the eyes of the CCRC. Now, just because they binned the case off didn't mean the police or the Crown Prosecution Service had. They met with the FSS to discuss the DNA discovery, and this meeting was logged. And the log showed that the FSS wanted to do additional testing to isolate the male chromosome of this mystery DNA, the male chromosomal part of the DNA, to get a clearer result. But the CPS advised against it. The then head of the CPS's complex casework in Manchester advised that unless there was an appeal, he did not see there was a need to do any further work on the file. Now, come 2011, the CCRC, after a meeting with a forensic scientist, again logged, declared that we are not going to get a profile from the material available, which is capable of being searched, and as a result, someone identified. And a month later, they also stated that the location of the DNA on the vest top does not make it any more likely to have been left by the attacker as opposed to a different individual. We know that was a lie, because they found searchable DNA back in 2007, which was, of course, searched and failed to find a match. So we have a situation at this point where the CCRC, the police and the CPS, it would appear, just can't be bothered to check if they got something wrong and not necessarily for lack of the Forensic Science Service trying. The following year, the CCRC refuses Malkinson's 2009 application. For three years, the bloke had been in limbo and they did it without looking at the full police file or by commissioning any more DNA testing. Now the story moves on to 2017. Malkinson's case was picked up by the charity Appeal, and in 2018, a new appeal on behalf of Malkinson was mounted, which showed up errors in witness statements. The CCRC again 
refused the latest application for appeal. The appeal charity had commissioned its own DNA testing by this point and received the results in 2020, linking the crime to an unknown man. After a legal battle to access the relevant police files, legal battle, appeal discovered previous criminal convictions of key witnesses, bringing their testimonies into greater doubt, Finally, Malkinson got released from prison on good behaviour at that point. On the basis of all of these failures, Malkinson again appealed his conviction in 2021. Come 2022, a new arrest was made. In January of this year, the CCRC finally referred the case back to court. And last month, Malkinson was finally exonerated. It only took 17 years for an innocent man to clear his name. So we come on to Keir Starmer. Keir Starmer became head of the CPS in 2008 and remained there until 2013. The knowledge of new DNA evidence in the Malcolmson case was known about in, 20, in 2007, the year before Starmer became DPP. But of course, the events of the case continued. And as much as the CCRC have clearly made some appalling excuses to not look at this case more closely, based on logged reports from the time, their remit is to refer cases back to courts if they think there has been a miscarriage of justice. And you would imagine the police and the Crown Prosecution Service would want to ensure such things don't happen either and refer such things as they find them to the CCRC as soon as they come up, as soon as they appear. Yet clearly that didn't happen. And we see what amounts to collusion almost between those three agencies, the CCRC, the CPS and the police, to not bother and just bury it. And we struggle with the concept of, of people who could do this, the possibility that an innocent man could be behind bars, new DNA evidence had come to light, and it would be within our power to at least make sure beyond doubt that that was not the case, that a miscarriage of justice had not happened. Yet when the CCRC literally exists to examine these things, it's what they are there for. Why have they not done it? But then the CPS and police didn't seem to think so either. And you now have to consider the events that followed with the knowledge of the Starmer was head of the CPS at this time. Malkinson made another appeal in 2009. Starmer was head of the CPS now. The CPS and police met with forensic scientists in December of that year. Scientists who wanted to explore new DNA testing on this unknown DNA sample they'd found, and the CPS advised against it. Why? What possible justifiable reason could there be to not investigate new evidence in front of your face? knowing it could be the difference between an innocent man being be kept behind bars or not. The CPS, it should be noted, is supposed to write to the CCRC at the earliest notice if it suspects a miscarriage of justice, so were they just willfully blind or just badly run? The CPS certainly failed in its remit here as far as its relationship with the CCRC goes. Now, of course, in this case, just as others of the time that were notable, Savile, for example, there is no way of definitively linking Starmer himself as head of the CPS to this case. Though the head of the CPS for complex casework in Manchester was, you can imagine they report to somebody, and that somebody could have been Starmer. Appeal, the charity, have also weighed in on the failures of the CPS here. They've said the documents are a shocking chronicle of how and Andy, Andrew Malkinson, was utterly failed by the body, which should have put an end to his wrongful conviction nightmare, but instead acted as a barrier to justice. An overhaul of the CCRC is needed to prevent it failing other innocent prisoners. By relying only on the CPS's file, the CCRC missed the chance to identify disclosures so grave that senior judges have since ruled they would have rendered his conviction unsafe. Again, I have to reiterate that we don't know that Starmer was personally involved here, but this was the service he was running. Will we find out otherwise? Maybe. Although you can argue this might be politically motivated, two former Tory Solicitor Generals, Tories it must be added, are now calling for a public inquiry into the Malkinson case, one of whom, Lord Garnier, has called the miscarriage of justice jaw-dropping. And far be it from me to want to agree with a Tory ever, but the guy was locked up for 17 years and he was innocent. Jaw-dropping is exactly what it is. It would also give us some insight, aside from the rather negative impressions already given by people who worked there at the time, into how the CPS was run under Keir Starmer. Whatever failings a public inquiry might uncover will reflect on how he ran the service. A glorified civil servant running a non-ministerial government department, as he basically was at that time. And that might be quite pertinent, given he now wants to run the country. Imagine how Malkinson might feel right now, looking at the ham-faced, brill-creamed boar-fest on the telly, knowing he might be, by 
virtue of being in charge of a not so well run department as things might appear, which failed to follow up on DNA evidence that did end up clearing him in the end, but could have cleared him more than a decade earlier if the CPS had followed up on that DNA as they should have done. That the man, it is possible, is responsible for him suspending so long behind bars could soon be running the country he's finally free to live in as he wants to again. Of course, some will say we can't solely lump this on Starmer because the mistakes and miscarriages predated him. 2007 was the key year when the DNA came up. The report made by the FFS into its existence, however, came in in 2008. And Malkinson mounted an appeal based on this in 2009. So this does imply Starmer was probably in place when the DNA came to light. Or his predecessor at the CPS, Ken MacDonald, now Lord MacDonald of River Glaven, was winding down and may have kicked it into touch, perhaps. The timing is a little bit fuzzy. MacDonald, at the time he was made DPP, wasn't a popular choice either, as it happens, as he had business dealings with the Blairs. And it was called rampant cronyism, putting him in charge of the CPS at the time. But there we go. I don't know. We're in the realms of conjecture, given the timing. But mistakes at the CPS certainly did continue and did continue under Starmer's tenure as DPP. And so any public inquiry might prove to be quite uncomfortable for him. But if he is an utterly piss poor leader who never ceases to remind us he was director of public prosecutions, could that be something he ends up regretting making so much of if a public inquiry happens? And if it does happen, so it and, and it finds that faults were found that should never have happened and questions are asked of his leadership at that time and rulings are made so this doesn't happen again, obviously being the main purpose of such an inquiry. But if Starmer is in any way directly implicated or is implicated by changes and reforms he brought in, surely we ought to know before he ends up running the country about that. What do you think? Should we have a public inquiry? And do we deserve to know what if in any way Starmer was implicated in this case himself if we're to risk electing him as PM? Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. Please like, share and subscribe. If you did more content out daily, leave a comment and join the conversation on this video. Please do. Meanwhile, here's a video recommendation where Starmer is already turning a blind eye to much within his party. His continued ignorance of the Ford report, again, reinforces the thinking that this is a man who doesn't listen, doesn't pay heed to investigative findings, especially ones he doesn't like, not even from Martin Ford himself, that that character flaw that will affect all of us We'll follow him into power if elected, and I'll hopefully see you on the next vid. See you, folks.